Welcome back, my name is Cameron Fleury and in this video I'm gonna share my top 10 drumming parts of all time. Then please do not hesitate to comment below and let me know what yours are. Let's get this video started off with number 10. And number 10 is John Bonham's playing on When the Levee Breaks. John Bonham's a legendary drummer, he should be at the number one spot for all of these, but there's so much great music and great drumming out there that it was kinda hard to place him at any given spot. Moving on to number nine. <laughs> Everybody knows that. Dave Grohl was huge in Nirvana. Nirvana was huge in the 90s. If you're not a Nirvana fan, you sure as hell know this drumming part and you can't get it out of your mind. Coming in at number eight is ACDC's Thunderstruck. Phil Rudd's drumming is very memorable and tasteful for the music. It might be simple, so that's why it's really easy to remember. And this is why Phil Rudd made the top 10 list with Thunderstruck. What would a top 10 most aired drumming list be without Metallica's Entered Sandman? At number seven, this is a very memorable and simple pattern for musicians and music listeners alike. Now I know everybody hates on Lars and maybe you have seen my trash can lid video. If you haven't, I'll put a card for it up here. There's just something about Dave Grohl's drumming that came from Nirvana and was able to coexist inside of the Foo Fighters material and he got Taylor Hawkins to play on this song called Everlong and it is really catchy and really easy to follow. Then I think you can see this pattern a lot in these songs on this list because it's really memorable. Moving on to number six. Number six on my list is Queen's We Will Rock You, the simple boom, boom, ba, boom, boom, ba. That's, that's a total arena riff version of a drum pattern that you can get the whole crowd going. It'll stick with them for a lifetime. It is a very timeless drum pattern and that's why it made it so high up on my list. When Dime leads on the riffs and then Vinnie Paul comes in on the toms and then plays a basic backbeat on the hats, that's a very, very powerful statement. And the music as a whole is very powerful and memorable. That is why Pantera's Walk will be forever one of the best metal songs ever written. Before Meshuggah's bleed on their album called Obzin, we had a band from the 70s and 80s called Van Halen. Now, a song of theirs that everybody knows sounds like bleed is called Hot for Teacher. It's a very, very awesome pattern. Once again, if you're not a musician or if you're just a music listener and love Van Halen, even if you don't, you know about this song. So I myself am Canadian, so what is a top 10 most air drum songs without having a Neil Peart drum pattern on it. Tom Sawyer by the band Rush is one of the all-time most aired drum songs ever. There's just something about Neil Peart's drumming pattern on Tom Sawyer that is inexplainably awesome and memorable. Dun, 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 dun. Boom, 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 boom. And at the top of the list, we have Phil Collins in the air tonight. And it takes like, whatever, three and a half minutes to get to this drum fill. But from what I read in his book, the only way he came up with this pattern was his, he just basically started the fill on the toms and then went all the way around the drum kit till he didn't have any drums left. Phil Collins' drum pattern is arguably the most air drum song ever. In the Air Tonight has been in all these big Hollywood movies and ask anybody what the best and most favorable air drummed part of all time is, it would have to be Phil Collins in the Air Tonight. If you want to learn more about drumming and drumming related things, I'm going to put a playlist up here with some drum lessons and if you already haven't considered doing so, please subscribe to my channel, hit the bell for notifications and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks so much.